What is going on everybody? Jimmo here again with another very exciting video where we're going to be doing a little bit of uh, paint work on this Dodge Charger. That quarter panel there which is in primer being baked by an infrared lamp at the moment um, is what we're going to be doing. It's going purple, the same purple from the Charger in the last video a few months ago. Well, not exactly the same, same code PHG but a completely different variant. But we'll be blending, that's the primer that's been sanded now. We'll be blending that color into the door and we'll be coloring this bumper completely. So it's been sanded, sanded down, well, repaired first, sand primed, sanded again, and it is ready for some paint. Now, uh, I was a little concerned about the door. The prep work was not, you know, as nice as I would have liked it to be. If you can see there, um, you can see the finger marks in it, which is not good. It means that they're pressing with their, their fingers uh, with the sandpaper, and that's kind of why you have that. Uh, I like to treat my blend panels with a DA. I'll use a, a thousand grip paper, go over with a sanding paste and a gray pad, and I find that's the best way to get a nice uniform finish on your blend panels. But this is going to fill in those minor scratches and block any potential of metallics getting caught in those grooves, which isn't generally a big concern, um, especially on this color on silvers and golds. It's more uh, of a worrisome thing, but you know, it's better to be safe than sorry here, so that's what we're doing. And here is the color going on with my Develbus Techna gun. And I wanted to take a minute here to address a question by Philip Hall in my last video. He was asking uh, what I thought of SATAs uh, in particular and kind of wanted some help picking out a gun. So um, I'm going to say the Techna gun, first of all, the one I'm using right now, is my favorite all around. It's my favorite base coat gun and it's also my favorite all around gun. So if you have one gun you can bring with you or purchase, this is probably the gun you want because it handles base coat really well and it handles clear, you know, fairly well as also. But um, it doesn't handle it nearly as well as a SATA RP would. I'm sure which I haven't used the new one, but the 3000 RP uh, handles it pretty well. Or the Iwata WS400, which is an amazing gun, which I just finally got back and I'm using in a minute. Um, but uh, yeah, nobody ever regrets really buying a SATA. They're a very well built gun and they last you forever. These Techna guns, sometimes you'll break the baffles on them, which fits in behind the fluid needle or fluid tip. So that's just kind of one thing to look out for with these guns. But as far as spraying goes, the Techna gun is kind of the best all around you can purchase and the best for the money because they don't cost nearly as much as a SATA or an Iwata. But, uh, you know, some guys prefer the way the SATA spray, so it's uh, somewhat subjective and uh, depends on personal preference. So. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with any with anything if you're buying something from Develbus, um, Iwata, or SATA. But just one thing to be careful when you're buying a gun is make sure that you're, if you are buying one for clear and one for base, make sure you're buying the right gun for each. So do your homework like uh, the Iwata, the LS400 is their base coat gun, the WS400 is their clear coat gun. And I've seen guys switch it up and uh, they're not quite as happy because one's designed for a certain product and it's not performing quite as well because the, the clear is a higher solid product. Um, they generally want a compliant gun which generates a bit more pressure at the tip and uh, versus the HVLP which is something that you would use for base. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're doing your gun shopping. All right, so we're just about ready here to apply the clear, just running it over with a tack rag right, to wipe off any little debris that might have fallen on, and sometimes it takes out little nibs that are in the base coat right now, but uh, you got to be careful too because if there's a little nib there in a certain color, say a white, uh, you know, could smear and then reveal some sort of a black undercoat. It's kind of uh, one of those things you'd have to be in that situation to understand what I'm telling you, but uh, yeah, just be be careful. You, you'll, know, you'll know when it happens to you, but anyway... Uh, I also have a new lens for my camera, so you should be able to see the clear going on like never before. I, I'd say looking back at this video, it um, resembles the closest thing to a bird's eye view from the painter of actually watching the clear go on. So you'll get to see how it goes on the panel and flows out. Uh, so we're, well, I'm applying it to the sail panel right now. Um, I mean, some guys will blend the, the sail panel. That's never an, an ideal situation because you're going to have a weakened UV um, holdout in that area. So you always want to clear to the edge of every panel whenever you can. And you can see the fan pattern on this gun is just magnificent. And the way it atomizes, it's really difficult to explain. But you can just see how well it flows out as it hits the panel. Um, but yeah, you look 
look underneath of where I'm spraying and you can kind of see it looks a little bit dry. It doesn't have that same shine. So the shine just kind of continues as you go and you have to make it flow um, continually to get the shine that you're after because if I was to try and maybe spot in the top of this door now, uh, the surrounding area would have that dry look similar to as you've seen it going down the panels. And you'll see a little bit of what I mean here in the second coat. So watch as I'm doing the offsets. You can see the quarters getting a little bit hazier, and that's because the overspray is landing on the outside of the panel as well. So you get that same effect when you try spot and clear in different parts of the panel. And it's also kind of the reason you do the offsets first, because we want the outer panel to be as shiny as can be. And if we're going to have any haze at all, it's going to be on the inside edges where you don't really see it. So yeah, so here's our second coat going on. And one way we could also improve the quality on this job is by taking off that body side molding. But, you know, it's not my shop, so it's not my call. But if it were up to me, I'd be taking that molding off. And, um, you know, a lot of times people don't like taking them off because sometimes even they stretch out and they don't go on right afterwards. So often they might even need to be replaced. But, um, you know, if they were to remove that molding down the road, then they're going to have a clear line outlining it. And also what can happen if you go too heavy with the clear is you can... Also, um, you can bridge between the molding and the body of the car with the clear. It could crack down the road. So um, whenever you can, you always want to take off those moldings. So, uh, yeah, that's that. And this Iwata has a 1.3 on it. And it came with some funky regulator, too. I don't know why it had a different fitting than any other gun I've had. It required a male fitting a male HVLP fitting to thread into the regulator where any other one I've ever come across has been a female one but uh, anyway maybe one day I might order the proper fitting for it but until then it's got a developus regulator on it so here it is here um, looking pretty good so we've got a great shine on this it uh, came out very clean so that uh, that's a good thing um, now one thing I wanted to mention too was the color on this. Like I said, the variant I used on the last charger with PHG was way out to lunch. And I've got a whole bunch of spray out cards I'm going to show you. Okay, so as you can see, I had to do quite a few spray out cards to find uh, the proper color. Now, there was a lot of these ones that were blendable if I was doing that left quarter, which again, that would have been ideal to do and just blend the color in and be done. But I had to find as close as I could. So uh, the first one there is extremely coarse, the metallics, and I would have just had... A very difficult time turning it would have been pretty well impossible to blend that color just because the metallics are so far off but the the colors varied so much on this job that um, you know I needed to do quite a few spray outs but it's amazing this charger how inconsistent the color is it was a mile off from the one I did a few months ago that I also did a video on because I tried that variant first and uh, yeah it's just the way she goes it's the life of a painter for you so here's what she looks like all assembled and redeckled you can see it needs to be cleaned up yet, but uh, it's looking pretty good, what we've done to it. Um, nice finish going on there. We've got a nice color match on the left side, which took us quite a bit more time, but um, you know, it probably would have been quicker just to blend that door, but then they'd have to buy a new decal. Anyway, this one's uh, in the books for today, so thanks for watching, everyone. Leave me your comments. Let me know what you thought. Like, share, and of course, subscribe. And I guess that's it. Thanks again, everyone, and we will see you next time. Later.